can't this? I'm afraid there isn't enough to go around. Great shot. We see Malcolm yawning, which mirrors the audience at this point. We've seen the dinosaur attacks before. It's old news. This scene promises the audience something new and different. Then you end up watching the rest of the movie and realize how deceived you were. I was a big fan of dinosaurs growing up. In fact, there was a time where I was more into dinosaurs than I was into comic books. The original Jurassic Park came out at the perfect moment in my life. I was 12 and outgrowing dinosaurs and then suddenly they were badass again. Soon I found myself not only reading the book, but pretty much all of Michael Crichton's bibliography. Oh yeah, ooh, ah, that's how it always starts. But then later there's running and then screaming. When word of a sequel was announced, I was thrilled. The moment the book was released, I picked up my copy and started reading immediately. Quickly, I found myself let down by the novel to find that Ian Malcolm was the main character of the book, even though he died in the previous book. But I just accepted that perhaps this book is a sequel to the movie instead of the book, which is a bizarre thing to do, but was the only logical step I could think of. I know they tried to explain that the doctors somehow found Malcolm and saved him, but if I accept that, then Malcolm's death in the first book has a very Mr. Burns feel. Burns was rushed to a nearby hospital where he was pronounced dead. He was then transferred to a better hospital where doctors upgraded his condition to alive. Then the book blatantly retcons the T-Rex's vision, which I'm very mixed about. Part of me says it's good that they're trying to be more scientific about the whole thing, and another part of me would rather the fictional story just stick to its roots. I do know they said T-Rex's motion-only vision came from the amphibian DNA and not from the dino DNA, unlike the movie. And you keep still because you think that maybe his visual acuity is based on movement like T-Rex. My question is, how come the dino DNA from Isla Sorna is so different from the dino DNA from Isla Nublar? Even though I did find the book underwhelming and would have preferred a straight up sequel to the book instead of a sequel to the retcon to be like the movie book, I still enjoyed it overall and I assumed the movie would be rather faithful since the book felt to be in that continuity. Wow, was I wrong. This is one of the most baffling changes. Hammond's nephew doesn't lead an army onto the island in the book. Instead, there's a small team led by Dodgson. If you remember, Dodgson was the man that hired Dennis Nerdry in the first book and movie. Dodgson! Dodgson! We've got Dodgson here! You could actually just replace the character of Hammond's nephew with Dodson and have a nearly identical script. Instead of saying Hammond built an amphitheater in San Diego, say Dodson did, and voila. Exact same plot points without the meaningless character switch. Not only that, but it would allow one of the minor characters from the first movie to return and get more developed, and help link the story even more to the book it was based on and to the original movie. But I guess all this is just complaining about pointless change. The movie won't have been exactly the same, more or less quality-wise, no matter who the main villain was. There are so many other issues that make the movie far inferior to the original. This character doesn't exist in a book, but that doesn't bug me because he's interesting and played by the late great Pete Pozzawaith. The issue with his character is the fact that they fail to properly use him. It's explained right from the introduction that he wants to hunt a male Tyrannosaurus Rex. I see. You can keep it. All I want in exchange for my services is the right to hunt one of the Tyrannosaurs, a male. He even has this great story about Mount Everest that he uses to explain why he wants to hunt the T-Rex. Remember that chap about 20 years ago, I forget his name, climbed Everest without any oxygen, came down nearly dead. And they asked him, they said, why did you go up there to die? He said, I didn't. I went up there to live. 
It's really very fascinating. Does he get to hunt the T-Rex? Yeah. And for all its buildup, it's really pretty forgettable. If you blink, you'll miss it. And that's just to tip the iceberg here. This character does some rather despicable things throughout this movie. First, he breaks the leg of an infant T-Rex with the intent of luring its father to it. He also notices that Sarah has baby T-Rex blood in her jacket. It's implied that perhaps he knows this will lure the T-Rex to them. Why he realizes this and no one else does is a fucking mystery. No, don't bet on it. Tyrannosaurus got the largest proportional olfactory cavity of any creature in the fossil record with the exception of one. Right, uh, a turkey vulture could uh, scent up to 10 miles. Even if you're not sure, I honestly wouldn't want anything that might attract a T-Rex to me. Anyways, he does this stuff that is cruel or endangers the entire group, and what is his punishment? He gets his hunt. He gets the T-Rex. I guess his friend dies. He didn't make it. I'll okay. But honestly, his character is very forgettable. Every time his name is mentioned, all I can think of is who? He might have less lines than the number of times his name is said. I get blind here. Wait for the back to return. RJ, look out! Holland. Don't go into the long grass! Not into the long grass! I think it's RJ's back. He didn't make it. RJ. <laughs> And it really doesn't make it better when it was in fact Roland's actions that led directly to AJ's death. This character is a great kind of villain that you also like. But he's also a villain that for all intents and purposes wins. He does shitty stuff that leads to the death of Eddie, AJ, and countless others. And in the end, what's his punishment? He gets his goal. He wanted to take down a T-Rex and that's what he got. And I guess he learned some random moral lesson too? I believe I've spent enough time in the company of death. <sighs> Whatever. Great character, great actor, terrible execution. The idea of this movie was to set up a hunters versus gatherers theme, but honestly it never works right for me. But that's the least of the problems. The good guys are the gatherers, being led by Ian Malcolm, and the bad guys are the hunters, being led by Peter Ludlow, aka Hammond's nephew, and Roland Tembo. And since the hunters are obviously the bad guy, the movie wants us to root against them. But in reality, Nick Van Owen, one of the gatherers, is the real villain of this movie. In case they weren't, he did send a backup plan. What backup plan? Me. His first act of villainy is to unleash the dinosaurs from their cages, risking the lives and possibly killing some of the hunters who have done nothing to Nick's group directly. And why does the Triceratops need a special lock on its cage? Isn't it obvious? We're not alone on this island. Then he frees an injured T-Rex, which is fine. He takes it to the team's RV to have its broken leg treated, which is completely insane. Why would you assume any casting put on the creature would remain? And while it's insane that he does this, it does make his character more likable, which is desperately needed at that point. And honestly, this RV scene and Eddie's hero sacrifice are some of the highlights of the movie, so I'm not gonna get bogged down with them. Then Nick does something that really gets people killed. He gets rid of Roland Tembo's bullets. This means when the T-Rex attacks, he is unable to kill it and instead has to tranquilize it. This means that Nick is responsible for every death from this T-Rex from this point on. Every death in the San Diego attack that he is strangely absent from is his fault. What? Did he see what he did and just act casual, whistle, and walk away? Maybe he would have stayed and helped clean up his mess. But you know, he had to get back and feed his dogs. You gotta have your priorities. First off, let me just clarify that I'm excluding the grass scene from this list. That scene is really well done. What I'm talking about is the attack on Ian, Sarah, and Kelly on the remains of the engine site. This scene is played serious, but it really doesn't feel that way at all. The raptors first attack the group by attacking Sarah's lucky sack and it attacks it viciously, somehow completely missing Sarah. Not only is the fact that the raptor leaves Sarah completely uninjured silly, but this also means Sarah won't 
die in this scene. Otherwise, the whole savage attack of her sack is pointless. Then we have Ian running into a building. The raptor crashes through the window and Ian runs out. And that's actually pretty funny. But it reveals that Ian will survive this scene. Though it's not like we had any doubt of that. Then we have Kelly, the child character. And the movie basically says at the beginning that won't kill off a child character. Oh, she's fine, she's fine. So take a wild guess whether or not you think Kelly will die. Well, don't worry if you missed that one, because here's a follow-up. Will the child character have a strangely specific skill that will turn out to be useful in the movie, just like in the first movie? And for our final question, will the skill be much stupider than it was in the first one? And unlike the scene with Ian that was stupid but funny, this one is just fucking stupid. In the end, this scene really sabotages the raptors, who in the first one were smart enough to outhunt Muldoon, a man who had even studied raptor hunting habits. Here they fight amongst themselves rather than grab the meal that's there for the taking. In the first one, there was some snipping between them, but not to the point where it actually undermined their hunt. Kelly? Kelly, no! <laughs> School cut you from the team? Well, obviously, if you get a coral snake on you, you probably want to step out where the T-Rex is. Surely you have a better chance fighting the T-Rex than fighting the coral snake in the cave. What a smart guy. <laughs> if a movie could jump the shark, this would be the prime example. I mean, the rest of the film is absolutely flawed, but this ending is something very special. It's hard to find any part of it that isn't riddled with flaws. Obviously, Steven Spielberg wants to do a Godzilla movie, and you would think with his kind of clout, it would be a done deal. But instead of making a Godzilla movie, we get T-Rex rampaging through San Diego. This whole scenario is a bad idea. See, the T-Rex is captured with the intent of bringing it to the new Jurassic Park amphitheater. But somehow, in the middle of the boat ride from Isla Sorna to San Diego, the entire crew is killed. How are they killed? That's a question that I have no fucking idea how to answer. Maybe the T-Rex broke out? Did a surgical strike killing everyone on the ship while inflicting minimal damage to the ship itself, then trapped itself back below decks, setting up the guy's hand as a trap? As soon as someone is foolish enough to move the guy's hand, the trap is sprung. Because that's the type of mind fuckery the T-Rexes in this series are known for. Then we get this complicated plan where they grab the T-Rex's infant and use it to lure the adult T-Rex back to the boat. Even though it's already been shown that traditional weapons are effective against the T-Rex. This isn't really Godzilla. We've seen T-Rex be tranquilized before, but instead they're going to guide a T-Rex through town and endanger as many people as possible. If you have to choose between a human and T-Rex's life, I think most people would choose the human life. Instead of doing these complex tricks, they should just be shooting the bastard. I really hated this movie when I first saw it. I loved the first movie, loved the first book even more, was really disappointed, but still enjoyed the second book. And honestly, this movie falls short of the second book, with maybe one or two exceptions. I was hoping perhaps Spielberg would do some changes and actually improve the book, but almost all the changes went the other way for me. But with repeat viewings, I can see the enjoyment of this movie. The whole idea of hunters versus gatherers really falls flat for me, but if you go into this movie ignoring that, and also ignoring that it's a Spielberg movie. If you go into this movie expecting a B-grade monster movie where the monsters are dinosaurs, honestly, you can have a lot of fun with this. 
the ending gets too stupid even for that. But until then, you have a good 90 minute monster movie with some really clever action scenes. The scene with the RV and Eddie's hero sacrifice is easily one of the best scenes in the movie, despite the fact they shouldn't even have the baby T-Rex there. It's a bad idea done with good intentions, so it's tough to hate on Nick too much for that one. Anyways, there's other reasons to hate on Nick. Me? The grass raptor scene is really awesome. I just wish it wasn't followed by the slapstick raptor scene. Really, once you get to the end of the scene where the raptors are hunting people in the grass, the best of the movie is behind you. Do I hate this movie like I used to? No, not at all. I've pretty much grown to accept it. It works as it is. It's just a really well done B movie with dinosaurs and I really think that's the best way to describe this. At this movie's best moments is just as good as the original Jurassic Park. It's just those moments are so few and far between. I think on average, I watch this movie maybe once every seven years or so, and I enjoy it for what it is when I do. So in the end, I give this movie the same grade I give every movie I enjoy, but may not be the best movie. This movie gets a 6 out of 10. I wanted to add a quick comment. During my research for this movie, I was bombarded by people complaining about Ian's daughter being black. Let me just clear this up. Is it likely that Ian would produce a child who appears completely black with a black mother? No. Is it possible though? Absolutely. This is not an issue or a plot hole with the movie. Let it go. Hey, if you like this video, please make sure to hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe. That helps me out a lot. And if you really love this video, consider visiting my Patreon page. 